Yes, I'm back at it again for all you latency nuts out there. You better be on your hands upside down, but chugging some G Fuel as we speak, because today we're getting to the bottom of what are the actual lowest possible latency settings that you can do using a 1000 FPS camera and an unhealthy amount of time. Now, a little while ago, I did do some latency testing and I found that with an NVIDIA graphics card, G-Sync plus V-Sync plus Reflex was the most consistently low latency experience that also didn't give you tearing. Now, of course, you can uncap your frame rate, which in some cases did lead to even slightly lower latencies, although you did get tearing as well as bad frame pacing at times and to top it all off. In many cases, if you're GPU bound, it'll actually be slightly higher. At least that's what I found. But many people pointed out, hey, if you use Reva Tuner or use a driver cap, it will actually increase the latency. So fair enough. Today, we're getting to the bottom of it. And in order to figure that out, first I decided to control a few variables and test for some stuff such as borderless window versus full screen, where I found it to be slightly faster in full screen. I also found it to be slightly faster to use display scaling versus GPU scaling. And I also found that it was technically a little bit faster to use FreeSync off versus FreeSync on. However, guys, all this stuff is pretty close to margin of error stuff. So while I will be using full screen and display scaling, I don't think it's a good idea to have FreeSync or G-Sync off. As like I mentioned, you can run into frame pacing problems as well as screen tearing. So I don't think the possible maybe one to two milliseconds lower latency is worth disabling that. But in any case, with all that stuff out of the way, I'm gonna be taking a look at three games using an average of three runs per setting. And do keep in mind, latencies can be different from game to game depending on the frame rate cap engine and what's being fired as there could be built-in trigger delay or something like that. Also, if some of the slides I just showed you looked a little bit different in terms of latency from one to the other, that's because I did them on different days, so there can be slight variances, but the results still stand. But in any case, let's move on to the first game, Apex Legends. In last, we actually have a 225 FPS RTSS cap at 27.7 milliseconds. Second last was an unlocked FPS, which gave me 27 milliseconds. And then in second place, we actually had a 225 FPS driver cap at 26 milliseconds. And then the lowest latency setting was actually a 225 FPS game cap at 23.7 milliseconds and here this is interesting as unlocked frame rate once again wasn't that good and i think this is down to me running a high resolution so i'm not going to get way beyond the 225 that i was already getting but now let's move on to modern warfare 2 and here we can see that in last place was a 165 fps rtss cap at 40.3 milliseconds Second to last was a 165 FPS driver cap at 37.7 milliseconds, and I did lower the cap to ensure that it was always hitting that frame rate. Then in second place, we actually had an unlocked frame rate at 31.3 milliseconds. And then in first place, once again, a 165 FPS game cap. Then we have Fortnite DirectX 12. Last place was the driver cap at 38 milliseconds. Then in second last place was RTSS Reva Tuner Statistics Server that comes with MSI Afterburner that many people use at 34.3 milliseconds. Then in second place was unlocked FPS at 30.7 milliseconds. And then in first place, once again, was the game cap at 24.3 milliseconds. So on average, if we do the math guys here, last place actually was using Reva Tuner at 34.1 milliseconds. Second to last was driver cap at 33.9. Then in second place was unlocked FPS at 29.7 milliseconds. And in first place, is yes, the game cap at 26.3 milliseconds. And this is exactly what I was expecting to see. And it looks like that, yes, people were right. Using a game cap is indeed much lower latency than using an external cap. And I'll also mention that, yes, while once again, unlocked FPS can technically give you lower latency, you do need to be getting far more FPS than where you would be capping it at or beyond your refresh rate for it to actually be worth it. And even in that case, you still might wanna actually cap it at some point because for example, say you have a 240 hertz monitor, but you get 500 FPS. Well, if you actually cap that to like 400 FPS, well, now your GPU isn't under 100% load and it will definitely be giving you slightly lower latency than having that in-game FPS cap. But of course, once again, there are downsides to unlocking your FPS and very few people will actually be able to take advantage of those lower latencies anyway, which is why I really don't recommend unlocking your FPS to almost anyone unless, again, you know you can get way, way higher FPS. And I still wouldn't recommend it, honestly. And in terms of the actual latency difference between these settings, well, 
Reba Tuner and a driver cap have actually nearly 30% higher latency than using the in-game cap, and my results showed unlocked FPS also resulted in 13% higher latency. So overall, guys, I do think if you don't have access to Reflex or you don't have access to something like Anti-Lag Plus from AMD, it is a good idea to use an in-game cap as it's kind of the same thing. Reflex kind of operates like that, but it's somewhat dynamic, I guess you could say. So it's basically the same thing, as long as you always hit that frame rate, which if you set up your frame rate cap correctly should be happening. So there you have it, guys. Hopefully this is basically like the ultimate latency test. This answers all of the questions. If there's anything else you do want answered, let me know in the comments below. I do highly suggest sharing this around with people as I do know there's a lot of people out there using Reba Tuner or other driver caps and they're having far, far higher latency, which is a huge shame because people pay a lot of money to move from like 240 hertz to 360 hertz, which is like a 1.5 millisecond drop. Well, you can drop way more than that just setting up a cap correctly and you also won't be getting any frame tearing or frame pacing issues. Whether you're looking to connect a new console, gaming PC, or just need a fast and reliable HDMI cable to connect over long distances, Rupro has you covered with their certified 8K HDMI 2.1 fiber optic cable available in sizes of up to 50 feet and can deliver a perfect full 48 gigabits per second connection over distances other cables could only dream of reaching. And with 48 gigabits per second of bandwidth, it can easily drive 8K 60 FPS or 4K 144 FPS 10-bit HDR video through its ultra-thin, flexible, and durable housing, and it even supports ER. So if you're in the market for a cable that can drive a beautiful new TV or monitor, be sure to check out Rupro on Amazon today.